Right, John, time for you to face the facts that I was way better than Potch. John, how are you? Hello again, Sean. I proved you wrong, didn't I? 6-0, 6-0. Absolutely spanked them. We'll do the same to West Ham. Don't worry about it at all. January transfer window, though, I don't think we're going to do anything because we've got no money. Well, we can give you some if you want to guarantee a better Premier League finish. Really? Are you sure? Yes, but we expect to be challenging for the title now. Well, of course we're title challengers. We put them in 10 points clear on top of the league. Then it's done. You've got 20 million to play with. Oh, you absolute legend. Perfect timing, too, with Hendo out with an injury. So we might have to reinvest that in the midfield. Great. Awesome stuff, John. We'll get the job done against West Ham. Then we'll find a target for the transfer window. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of Quadruple or Nothing with Liverpool here on the FM23 Beta on Sean Does the FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we play a Carabao Cup quarterfinal away at West Ham and also update you guys on what has happened since yesterday's episode which was the fourth round as we took on Tottenham prior to the start of the January transfer window. So if you are looking forward to today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but we have played a few premier league games off the back of yesterday's episode as i said it was a carabao cup fourth round tie against tottenham if you missed that one i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner we also started our journey in the fa cup this is usually the time we would show you guys the highlights from all those games but we have scored quite a few goals so we'll be here quite a while if we did do that we have played four games we started off with a 6-1 win at home against Bournemouth that included double to Luis Diaz off the back of that we took on Nottingham Forest this one a little bit dicey because Nottingham Forest did open the scoring three minutes in with quite a rotated team in some positions but thankfully Roberto Firmino he picked up a double which meant that we did pick up a fairly comfortable win there in the end, and off the back of that, we started 2023 with an absolute crashing of Crystal Palace 12-0, a hat-trick for Luis Diaz, and a brace by both Jude Bellingham, Virgil van Dijk, as well as Darwin Nunez, so lots of goal scorers for us there. The biggest win in Premier League history, and off the back of that, we were in the third round of the FA Cup against Championship Team, mid-table Championship Team in Sheffield United. They got a goal back early on in the second half, but we were already in quite a good position by that stage and in the end picked up a 4-1 win thanks to doubles from Ibrahima Kanate and from Harvey Elliott. So things have been going well off the back of yesterday's episode. As you can see down there near the bottom of January, we are going to be playing Brighton or Crystal Palace in the fourth round of the FA Cup of the latter. I dare say we will be putting on another thrashing on those guys. So I think we should be making our way through another couple of rounds of the FA Cup. But in terms of the Premier League, the table does look quite similar to what it did look like off the back of the World Cup break. We are 10 points clear of Arsenal and Southampton, three points further back. These days, Wolves are in fourth position and Man City and West Ham just sitting in behind there. And those top six do look like they have separated just a little bit from the rest of the pack. But in terms of the title race, it does look like a free horse race and even then we are certainly the title favourites I think it's fair to say off the back of our start to the first half of the Premier League season but we are in the January transfer window and as mentioned in the intro we have been given a little bit of money by the board which is very nice indeed they increased our wage budget off the back of us changing our expectations in the Premier League from qualifying for the Champions League which already we should be pretty close to doing and instead making ourselves title challenges. We could have said that we would win the Premier League, but there wasn't that much of a difference between the wage budget for that and being title challenges. So I thought it was just a little bit safer to go for that, even though in hindsight, only doing a one season save probably should have just gone for winning the Premier League. But nonetheless, as you can see, we have around about £20 million now to play with. And that could be quite useful because in one of those games that we did just play in that most recent block off camera, Jordan Henderson has picked up a serious injury and he is out unfortunately for six weeks to two months with a hip injury and that does mean now we are quite light in terms of defensive midfielders we did shift him to a defensive midfielder 
once we did sign Jude Bellingham and also once Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain did come back from his injury. So I think that's going to be the area where that £20 million does get used. We have already put bids in though for a player who's probably going to feature in today's game. No surprises considering the options that we do have to try and sign a defensive midfielder, especially if it's out of England. We were hoping to get Declan Rice with a lot of future instalments. Unfortunately, though, they just won't quite accept 20 million up front as a high enough fee. They want somewhere around 30 million up front and then locked and locked with add ons, as you would expect. And I doubt if we were going to win that race anyway, because as you can see, he is currently underbid from Police St. Germain. So PSG trying to sign Declan Rice to try and help them win the Europa League, of course, because they didn't make their way out of their Champions League group. So this could be one of the last games that Declan Rice does play in a West Ham shirt, but unfortunately couldn't get Declan Rice over the line as a signing in terms of potential ones who we could get. I think the guy that we are going to go after in the January transfer window, probably off the back of today's game or a little bit closer to deadline day, we'll make our way over to the shortlist and go have a look at the players in certain positions. And with the money that we do have available to us, I think this will be our guy, Keflem Fulham out of Nice, the Frenchman. Does look like a good option in that defensive midfield role, 1.92 metres tall, so quite a good tall lad, should be decent at hitting, which is what I do like from my defensive midfielders in that halfback role. And he should be able to do a decent job for us, even when Jordan Henderson does come back as well, a good little extra bit of squad depth. And hopefully, if we go after him, which I think is going to be the most likely case off the back, of the game in today's episode, he will join us just prior to the end of the January transfer window. But we are about to take on West Ham in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, of course, off the back of our 6-0 win yesterday against Tottenham in the fourth round. As you can see, Manchester City, Chelsea and Arsenal are going to be the final four teams, hopefully alongside us in the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. So it's certainly all of the big guns as well as relegation-bound Chelsea, it looks like at the moment, who are going to be in the last few stages of the Carabao Cup, and hopefully we can join those guys, of course, the save. is called quadruple or nothing, so it would be nice to defeat West Ham in this one. As you saw earlier, they're right in that hunt for Champions League football at the moment, so they are doing quite a good job, and obviously their key player for now is Declan Rice, and they do still have David Moyes in charge, playing a 4-2-3-1, but hopefully we should have a stronger squad than these guys overall, and we can continue on our good form that we have had for the most part of this save. And in terms of what has happened against West Ham so far in this save, we played them back in October. It was actually quite a close game. They scored an early goal through Jared Bowen, but then got a red card, and off the back of that, we picked up a somewhat sketchy 2-1 win. So this could potentially be an interesting game, of course, with that one having taken place at Anfield and using pretty much the same squad today as we did in that game. But hopefully we can pick up a win here and make our way through to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup, and we'll come back shortly with team sheets from the London Stadium as we take on West Ham. And the other team sheets for this one, first up, our West Ham, and as you can see, they are putting out quite a strong team for this game, albeit are uh, missing a few important players through injuries, the likes of Pablo for now. So there we are. It's our first choice 11, and hopefully we can pick up a good result here and make our way through to the Carabao Cup semi-finals. And that is half time in the semi final of the Carabao Cup. No highlights at all in the first half. As you can tell by the stats, West Ham did do a little bit early on, as you can see through the XG graph, albeit about a third of the way through that first half. We certainly clicked into gear, albeit so far. Yet to put the ball in the back of net, and we'll get things back underway here. Obviously, still locked up at nil all. And still no highlights in this one, but I think it is time for us to make a few substitutions to players who are just struggling a little bit out there in terms of their match rating. Joel Matip will take him off for Ibrahima Kanate, a player who is putting a little bit of pressure on Matip for that first team spot. Also Trent, not playing that well today. Joe Gomez will come on for him. And the same for Luis Diaz. It will be Diogo Jota. And hopefully something happens in the last half hour of this game. Still nil all. And we've finally got a highlight in this one. It's a throw in our favour just shy of entering the last 20 minutes as Jude Bellingham just shuffles that one back to Virgil van Dijk. And now Ibrahima Kanate starts to get us here on the front foot. Mo Salah now on the ball. We'll play that one back to Kanate. And it looks like here we are camping inside of the West Ham half. Nice ball. Put in the mixer there for Darwin Nunez, but just heads that over the bar. So there's the first highlight. Not overly threatening and still nil all with just under. 20 minutes left now as we do have Jude Bellingham down to a red heart, which we will look to deal with shortly, albeit we do have another highlight here as we were about to make that change, a free kick, which Virgil is taking this time, of course, with Trent Alexander-Arnold 
Bang off the field. Now Mo Salah does well to get that ball back off Declan Rice. The ball gets bundled over the line from Darwin Nunez off the back of a shot from Drew Bellingham. We are going to have to check here though for VAR and just make sure he was onside. If it is a goal, it would be a very, very ugly one. And the goal has somewhat surprisingly been awarded. It just looked a little bit too ugly that one. To be given, but good work here from Mo Salah. First off to get past Cornet and then take the ball off of Declan Rice and Darwin there. Just in a perfect place to pinch that off of the goalkeeper and put that over the line. And that does give us a 1-0 lead. And we are going to make a substitution here. Drew Bellingham will come off for the Ox with that 1-0 lead. And only a few minutes off the back of that previous goal. Back down West Ham's end here for a front, albeit they get the ball there through Thomas Sushik. And now it is Dawson who will play this one over to Maxwell Cornet. And he starts to make his way down the left-hand side, albeit that ball has a little bit too much on it. And Andy Robertson who has now gone down to a red hat alongside Mohamed Salah. So we'll take off one of those players off the back of this highlight, potentially Robertson, because he's not quite having as good a game as Salah is off the back of quite helpfully setting up that previous goal. And now Andy Robertson pumps this deep for Darwin Nunez, who is looking for a double, just takes that one around the West Ham goalkeeper. I think that might be Ariola in goal for them today. Puts that away. In the bottom left corner off the back of that, we will make that substitution. Simakas will come on for Robertson, but it's a quick fire double there from the Uruguayan striker, albeit that one a lot tidier than his first goal was. Some good work from him there to put that one away, and it gives us a 2-0 lead here at the London Stadium. Just about to enter injury time in this one. It's been a pretty quiet game in terms of highlights, especially until the hour mark, but we are going to pick up in the end a fairly comfortable 2-0 win. All the highlights end up being in our favour. And thankfully, Darwin Nunez picked up a double. And that is the difference maker as we are going through to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup after getting rid of a tenacious West Ham team, obviously, with no highlights taking place until the 67-minute mark. And that's a pretty good overall performance from most of the players, especially those ones who did come off the bench, gave us some good impact. In that game, so we pick up a 2-0 win, and we'll come back shortly and see who we get in the semi-final draw for this Carabao Cup. So a game without many highlights there, but we do make our way through to the semi-final draw for the Carabao Cup. As you can see, our potential opposition, Manchester City, Chelsea, and Arsenal. Surprisingly, the fans' lowest-rated potential opponent or preferred opponent is Chelsea. Just a quick reminder of what the Premier League table does look like. Chelsea down in 17th while Manchester City and Arsenal are up inside the top five, so not too sure what the fans are really on here in terms of these preferred oppositions, of course. If you remember back from the first knockout round draw for the Champions League, they preferred Dortmund, even though they came out of the same group as us, so I don't think that feature working quite as well as Sports Interactive would have been hoping for in the beta, at least, but it is time for us to take part in this draw. It should be a short one, of course. With it being a semi-final draw, first up out of the hat are Chelsea. These would definitely be my preferred opposition for this upcoming game. Steven Gerrard in charge, and he gives us exactly what we want in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup. It is going to be Chelsea versus Liverpool. That does mean the other semi-final will be between Arsenal and Man City. And on current form, Arsenal might be favoured to take that one out. But here is the matchup info. Marcelo Bielsa these days. In charge of Chelsea, he was the replacement for Graham Potter. They've got Silver as captain, Kante as their star player, and being 17th in the Premier League, I think that's quite a suitable tie for us, especially because we are playing them next in the Premier League, and I would say expecting to win that tie as well. And of course, the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup do take place over two legs, but that is our opposition, which we'll probably show you guys in tomorrow's episode, both legs of that one taking on Chelsea in the semis of the EFL Cup, seeing as we're getting quite late into that competition. And apart from that, still in the early stages of the FA Cup, getting through some so-so Premier League games at the moment until we do get stuck in to the Champions League. And around then is when we take on Arsenal in what could be a big old Premier League game, top versus second in the Premier League. So going over to the schedule, you will see off the back of where we do finish things today, we take on Chelsea next, then Aston Villa, then Manchester United, who to be fair, also doing a bit fairly in 10th place. We did beat them at Old Trafford earlier in this save. So I'd like to think we're going to get the job done against them at Anfield as well. And I think tomorrow we'll come back for both legs 
of that EFL Cup semi and give you guys a bit of a recap of what happens in the fourth round of the FA Cup as well. And hopefully at some stage during tomorrow's episode, we might make a signing in the defensive midfield role with that injury to Jordan Henderson. But that will do it for today's episode. Probably a bit of a short one because that game didn't have many highlights in it. But nonetheless, we make our way through to the semis of the EFL Cup and taking on Chelsea and need to win that to make a final and keep our quadruple dreams alive. But if you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. And until tomorrow for the semi-finals of the EFL Cup against Chelsea and hopefully a transfer as well. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.